Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, thank you very much for your time. And thank you for watching Overanalyze Adventures. I am some guy, and this is part five of my overanalysis of dark years. So, let's pick up where I left off. Yes, this game does not do transitions at all. It goes from two guys talking in London to a cutscene about something going down in Iran. Let's play a little game here. It's called, Does the text on the screen match up to what the voice actors are saying? So allow me to read to you the text on the screen. I had warned you not to poke your nose into every business. We are just getting started. We have more interesting plans for you in store. And now for the voice actor. I told you your curiosity is bad for you. It's just the beginning. We have interesting programs for you. Well, that was even close. And it's such a bizarre threat this guy is making. He's like, oh, curiosity's bad for you. But we have interesting programs for you. It almost sounds like he's a bad college recruiter. Oh, looky here, another voice bubble. Drag this corpse along. The crowd up there needs some fun. Now that's a statement that's pretty open to interpretation. So what do you have to say, Mr. Voice Actor? Take the scorps and bring it with you. They need some fun upstairs. It seems like he got the first bit of it right, and the last bit, but the middle? It's all confusing gibberish, at least to my ears. It's almost like the script to this game is just open to interpretation to any of the voice actors. Well, okay, that was a lovely cutscene right there, but I have no idea why we needed to see that. Who was that guy talking to? Where is this guy at? And better yet, when is this happening? All perfectly valid questions to ask of this narrative, because I'm at a loss to explain what we just saw. I assume it's important, though, because they bothered to make a cutscene. Whoa, I had no idea Iranian newspaper technology was so advanced in the 50s. I mean, just look at this paper. It starts off as a small thing, and then when it gets in his hands, it's like, boom, it becomes as rigid as cardboard, and the image on the front just kind of stretches out. My God, my nook can't do this. And it must be Sunday, because this newspaper seems to be as thick as a book. Now this is a rather interesting headline to be thrusted upon us. You may be wondering, why game, why are you showing me this? Well, Muhammad Masood, he was the owner of a newspaper in Iran, and he used his platform to attack the Iranian elites, and he was assassinated on February 12th, 1948. Which is pretty interesting, considering 1948 is two years before the 1950s, which is the setting for this game. So either our hero is reading a very old newspaper, or this is a flashback. I'd better talk to officers at Bipur. Of course it's not a flashback. This game treats time like it treats its script, as a vague suggestion that's open to interpretation. Hi, officers at Bipur. Did you find Masood's address? Hi sir, sure, here you are. I wrote it down on this paper. Sorry, but the doctor is waiting for you in the mortuary. Whoa, Mr. Zabapur, take a breath and blow your nose. You're talking a mile a minute here. Okay, thanks. So for those of you that cannot tolerate the piercing sound of Mr. Textotype Zabapur himself, allow me to interpret it. Basically, he said, hey, hey, remember that murder we're investigating? I found the address of the victim. You should probably go there. And oh, but first, you should see the doctor down in the mortuary. Why? I'm not going to tell you, but as Nike says, just do it. I'll have to give the game some credit here, though. At least for once now, we have some idea about what we're supposed to be doing, and it kind of makes sense. Hello, Doctor. Any results? Now I'm sure. As I guessed, it has been shot from a 1.5 caliber pistol aiming at right above the heart. See? The pistol is only available to army members and foreign counselors. Yeah, this is really bothering me because a 1.5 caliber pistol does not exist as far as I know. Hell, the only gun that I could find that was close to that caliber was this. My god, the killer surely does work for the military if he has access to hardware like this. Well done. Exactly. Thank you for the detailed information. Mr. Afsha, this is the autopsy result. You should sign it so we can deliver the corpse to his family. 
Thanks. Give me the paper if possible and I'll hand it to them. And for those of you that didn't catch it, even the subtitles now are becoming suggestions. The voice actors are just ad-libbing at this point. But anyway, it's kind of nifty that our hero has a trench coat now that can go invisible. Again, Iran was very advanced in the 50s. Sure thing, here you are. Oh, wonderful. Thanks to this piece of paper, we finally get a date in this game. It's Saturday, February 6, 1953. Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone between, I apologize, but I lost a little bit of my recording right here. You see, this game just likes to crash. And most of the time, I was able to salvage the video files, but for this section, I could not. And compounding matters, too, is that the game features no in-game saves. So in order for me to get this footage back, I would have to start a brand new game. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am not that much of a masochist. However, I do assure you that nothing of value was ultimately lost. All I did for this part of the game was just run around the police station until eventually I found my way out of it, and then this cutscene began. You think you can hit a girl and get away with it? So our detective friend here might be a bit overzealous. At least in my eyes, it doesn't appear like the car comes close to hitting the girl. And in fact, she seems to fall over well after the car's driven by. And also, you gotta love that mother's reaction. She's just standing around there, probably thinking to herself, Eh, it's alright this one goes. I got spares. This country's got laws. Oh. Yeah, this is a fantastic action sequence. You just avoid cars briefly, and then you're rewarded with a fabulous cutscene. Police, you're under arrest. Now, this game despises transitions. Maybe it's allergic to them, I don't know. It just goes from a car chase to all of a sudden, bam, we got a gun pulled on a dude. And our detective looks like he is really worked up. My god, what's going on with his clothes? He must be about to hulk out. Thank god I got to that poor girl in time. Well, this game's really one to embrace tell, don't show. Apparently, he did whatever he did with the guy who didn't really hit the girl and saved the girl at the same time. Again, all of our heroes in this game must have superpowers. So our hero trucks along in his little car and he goes to the house of the guy that was murdered in the second video. You know, that newspaper man? Oh boy, they should have kept that loading screen up a wee bit longer because I can see the world loading in front of me. I'd better talk to Masood's wife. I may find a clue to this complicated case. Now you may be tempted to think that this section of the game has some sort of pseudo-police work for you to do, but no, you would be wrong about that. This game is incredibly linear. There is only one way to do things, and that's in the order that the developers have already preordained. There is no diversion from their plan. It's simply a matter of wandering around and trying to find the interactable thing you can interact with. Now this game has a very peculiar problem with doors, and that's that none of them match up. And I'm dead serious here. It is very hard to find a door in this game whose exterior matches its interior. Like right here, this door clearly has windows and glass in it. Hell, you can even see the interior of the house through the window. But, go inside, it's all gone. That's not how doors work. It's really strange. And I have no idea how they could do this without making it intentional. So it really begs the question, are doors in Iran really messed up? Hello, ma'am. I'm Detective Afshar. I'm sorry for your loss. Hello, Detective. Thank you very much. Please find my husband's murderer as soon as possible and make him pay for what he did. Certainly. But I have some questions and your answers can help us with finding your husband's murderer. I'm not feeling well at all. Please come later. I beg you, ma'am. I need your help. Didn't you find anything suspicious about your husband's murder? Anything to catch your attention? Uh, well, that's a kind of peculiar question to ask like that. Was she a witness to the murder and I don't know that? Or is our detective right here just hoping that maybe she can solve the murder for him? No, nothing special. I suspect no one, just... Just what? Is there anything you want to tell me? Please, think carefully. Mohammed didn't behave normally for quite some time. He was anxious, kind of scared for something, maybe even angry, but he wasn't the usual Muhammad. Thank you, Mrs. Masood. Here's the permit to get Mr. Masood's body. Now you can take and bury him. Just one more point. I want to see his room. Let me show you. Thanks. 
I'll do it myself. Well, okay, and I suspect the only reason why that is is because the game devs couldn't have this lady walk. That'd be kind of tricky to pull off. But yeah, she really didn't provide us with anything all that useful. Her husband was anxious and nervous. I mean, there could be a million reasons why. Maybe he was having an affair. Maybe he was involved in messy politics. But none of that ultimately matters. All that does is that we find his room and solve some puzzles in there. Yes, be sure you leisurely stroll past the bookcase. Otherwise, you may miss the button prompt. I know it's kind of difficult to see all that white text amongst all that white light that fills this room. Fortunately, I just made a habit of tapping E constantly while playing this game. But hey, at least the puzzle's not that terrible. It's just assemble the solar system. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, someone did a bad job cropping this image. There's so much white still left. Oh, well, the message itself is confusing. You, director of the, I can't read that, Karzum paper, beware. If you do not withdraw from opposition to Shab whatever, dire consequences will await you, and you will suffer the same fate as some other guy. And then in some other font, it says a ring for my father, and then there's some random number, 0428. Well, okay. Aha, uh -huh. I was right. I need to read these articles in letters. Um, well, I have no idea what he's talking about. What articles? What letters? Nothing in that letter talked about that. I guess opposition to the Shah from the newspaper? So just read the paper? Is that what he's trying to say? But he mentioned the letters. What is this man talking about? Is he looking at the same thing I'm looking at? I mean, that's a serious question that often you'll find yourself asking throughout this game. Excuse me, Mrs. Masood. Do you know about Mr. Masood's father? Actually, we are in contact with my in-laws. I just know that my father-in-law has recently come to Tehran. Thank you for your help, and goodbye. Um, well, I got nothing for this, folk. I mean, I suppose it's a formal question to ask, but it just seems kind of weird in context. But hey, whatever, we're done with this area. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. All done. We never need to return again. So we return to the police station because, well, that's where the game wants us to go. Hello, officer. Hello, detective. Do you know whether Mr. Masu's file is in the archive or not? Sure, sir. You know, all journalist files are kept at the archives of the police station. Thanks. You're welcome, detective. It was nothing. All right, now we're going to look up the file on this guy or his father. I don't know. I'm having a difficult time keeping track of all of these Persian names. Sorry, I am not familiar with the language. Oh, damn, that dude just fell through the ground. Does everyone have superpowers in this universe? Is he all right? Yeah, he's acting like he's all right. But still, damn, that must have been quite the fall. Yeah, just checking, and no, the doors still don't match. Hello, Officer Hosseini. Hi, sir. Anything I can do for you? Yes, I want to find Mohammad Masood's file. Can you help me? Sure, sir. Our files are sorted alphabetically by last name. You can find it in the M section. Thanks. You're welcome, sir. All right, this puzzle doesn't sound too bad at all. All we need to do is find the M section. Oh, wait, there is no M section because they did not translate it out of the original Persian. Yeah, and as I said before, I don't know Persian. So yeah, I had to just go back and forth, back and forth, and rub up on every single object until eventually I was prompted to do something. Whew, this game got published, folks. I may find Masood's father's address in this file, and... And this for Master Mohsen's address. I have to go there and talk to him. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do that then. Whoa, that's not how perspective works. It seems like we started off as a giant, and then when we walked closer to the building, we got smaller. But still, we seem way too big to be able to enter that doorway. At least, comfortably. I have no idea why the developer decided it'd be a fabulous idea to put a strange filter effect all over this room. It's weird, it's like we're in some sort of rave. We just need the music going, the lights blinking, and oh my god, everyone. Yeah, let's stop feeling it. Mm. Oh, I doubt the father of the dead guy would appreciate it. Hello, Mr. Masood. 
I'm sorry to take your time. And I'm sorry that the camera decided that this would be the best possible angle to witness this conversation with. I'm Detective Afshar from the Criminal Investigation Department. I have some questions about your son, Muhammad. Mr. Afshar, I know nothing about Muhammad and even don't want to know. So he knows nothing about his son and he even don't want to know. Oh, right. Uh, I think that's pretty clear right there. But on the plus side, at least the camera moved a little bit, so we get to see our hero. Mr. Massoud, I have to say that, unfortunately. Say what, unfortunately? That you're a police officer investigating this guy's son's murder? Also, it looks like that steam is really fake. Like it's made out of cotton wads or something. I haven't got time to speak. I have to fix this stem pipe. Let me help you. First, we should turn off the main valve. Well, let's go ahead and do that with some random items we got lying around. And then talk to the father again. Yeah, that's the face of a man who's proud of his work. And also, is his hand radioactive now? What type of steam was coming out of that pipe? Perhaps that explains how this guy got his superpowers. Mr. Massoud, I've come on behalf of your son to take him the documents he had left with you. What documents? I know nothing of them. My sentiments exactly. What documents are you talking about, detective dude? Well, enough with this place. Let's go ahead and leave. Guys, there he is. The bloody bastard. Get rid of him. Oh no, we're about to be attacked by some rejects from the thriller video. And I mean attacked. As in, there's combat. <laughs> yeah, Mortal Kombat doesn't have... Anything on this game, just watch at how brilliant the combat is. As you can see, our hero is clearly using his superpowers as an advantage over his foes. I mean, the man's flying, and he's pretty much the Iranian Superman. Oh, damn, our hero just used his iron crotch to hurt this guy. <laughs> and we have to do this to two more guys. Because as we all know, thugs can only attack one at a time. Yeah, the combat is brilliant in this game. <laughs> What? Some here you are, no badass quote after beating up three dudes? No nothing, just, hmm, I'm staring inside the laundry now. Alright, let's go ahead and make our way back to the police station, I think. And talk to the doctor once again. Yeah, those doors aren't even close to matching up. I mean, this is just getting egregious at this point. Big old double doors. Oh, exterior, just one door. Uh, how hard is it to place doors in a game? Doctor, can I see the victim's personal belongings? Certainly, detective. Go ahead. Oh, I'm so tired. It's probably because of last night's lack of sleep. Well, that was easy. It appears that the subtitles have just given up at this point in the game, which is pretty unfortunate considering the music is so damn loud I have no idea what our hero just said. Something about tea and getting into a pantry. I have to go to the pantry. Well, while we're here, we might as well take a good look at this corpse. Yeah, looks like this guy had a very messy pasta dinner. And also, it's pretty clever that the developer here used Unity's default model position to simulate a corpse. I mean, he's got that classic sort of rigid look, and it's not noticeable at all. But anyway, let's go to the pantry and get some tea for the doctor, because after all, he's sleepy. So, wouldn't it actually make more sense to wait for him to go to sleep before robbing the corpse? Or whatever, we're going to jack him up so he'll be more alert, I guess. Hello, Master Garson. Can you give me a cup of tea? Hi, Detective Ashar. Oh, sorry. I'm stuck here. Uh, the door latch is broken. It needs a key when it is locked. So a latch is broken, and somehow this means we need a key. I'm pretty sure people in Iran have no idea how doors work. But anyway, we find the key and we let the dude out. And then we get the tea 
so we can rob the corpse. All right, let's get back to corpse robbing. I'd better go get Masood's ring from among his stuff while the doctor is having tea. So I suppose we did actually take the ring off this guy again through our psychic powers because clearly this man did not move. But anyway, we leave the area and go back to the father, who will now blindly trust us because we have the ring of his dead son. Which is kind of suspicious considering he knows his son is dead, so he knows if anyone has his ring, there's a chance that he was messing with his son's dead body. So maybe you shouldn't just trust him, but hey, whatever. Who am I to judge? Hello, Mr. Masood. Do you remember this ring? That's an exterior shot. Somehow the camera decided to pan actually out of the building. Can you give me the documents now? Uh, yeah, that's familiar. Wait till I get them for you. Wow. He didn't sound very convinced when he said that, but hey, it's good enough for him. We now got these precious documents. But first, there's a puzzle. It's a little lock puzzle. Now here is the thing, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone between the number for this lock is on that photo we picked up at the dead guy's house. But here's the kicker. There is no way to access that photo after you see it for the first time. I'm not kidding you. If there's a button that you can press, I am unaware of it. So, you have to remember the number. And fortunately, I was playing this in all one city. So, I remember the number. So with that said, let's end it right here, folks. And take a thorough look at these precious documents that were stored away inside this container. So hopefully, folks, I'll see you next time.